Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us on Joy Asani Live this evening. Today on the program, we are discussing the former governor, the immediate past governor of Kaduna State's statement, really, remarks, and national peace and unity. To discuss all of those, we have Deborah Yusuf. She is a political analyst in the studio. Recently, a video of the immediate past uh, governor of Kaduna said, Malam Nasir Erufai, went viral, generating opera, especially on social media. He was addressing a group of Muslim clerics in Kaduna after the All Progressive Congress, APC, was declared winner of the Kaduna state governorship elections. We have an excerpt of that video before I unveil my guest in the studio right now. Yes, I'm the doctor. I did saw war by Larabi. She is on my team. I charge 2019. Now, guys, she was not a nice Ya wanchi wa enda ba muslimu ba su zaben jami'an ya wanchi saboda ka me yasa zan ba su mataimaki na yi lisafi zan yi zamu iya cin zaben ba tare da mun ba su ba na dai kenan wannan siyasa ne so kake kace that's just an excerpt of the video of um former governor Nasser Erufai addressing according to reports Muslim clerics and as, as you can see there were reputable media organizations that covered that so if, if you just share your thoughts uh, Deborah Yusuf I mean I would really like to hear your thoughts when you saw that video first of all what came to mind it was shocking it was completely shocking for some of us who hold him in some high esteem? I mean, what, what, but you are from Kaduna State. How did you feel? Well, I wasn't shocked when I saw that video because I just felt it was Nasir Erufai being Nasir Erufai. He always finds a way to reveal himself, his true self. And that was the, that the, he, he, he did that. In the presence of the media to show you that this is not something uh, a sentiment that is hidden this is a sentiment according to what he has said he did the mathematics this is a sentiment he holds really close to his heart so my reaction when i first saw the video i was like oh okay he has done it again like i wasn't surprised because i am from cardinal state I have watched and listened to the governor closely for the last eight years. I have seen how he uh, he talks and how he handles issues. And I think that because he was addressing M Muslim um, clerics in that space, he got carried away to, to actually... Uh, to the extent that he felt free that he could say some of these things, forgetting the fact that the media houses were, were there. And it was very good and important that the media houses were there because any, uh, you know, allegations that were made outside of that substantial video proof would have been seen as a control, uh, 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 as a uh, conspiracy theory and a controversial statement. But now there is proof. So all a lot of people from the from cardinal region especially from the southern part of cardinal region have been saying about who Marlon Nasir Erufai is now there is evidence that can feed into what we have seen in the last past eight last eight years mm. so for me when I saw that video I wasn't surprised because I have lived in Kaduna Kaduna is my state Kaduna is where I was born and I for the last eight years with all that has gone down in Kaduna state I have watched Nasir Erufai closely and I have seen that he is an individual that always you know as we have seen evidently in that video tries to cause uh, division so sort of he's not a unifier you can't a uh, unity or unifying people do not come close should not exist in the same statement with nasiru erufai and now uh, nigerians have a video to for some of us i expect i i have not heard anything so far from the erufai side or the team or whoever manages him those who work around him 
I've been expecting people to come and say the that authenticity of that video. Oh, wow. that, that was the <laughs> justification and excuse for very famous people. I was quoted wrongly. I'm sure you must have but, seen but there are many instances. I, yeah, I, 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 I was quoted, quoted wrongly, wrongly. Or the yeah. artificial intelligence people must have done that um, just to just to um, reach back at his person and, and all of that. I've been expecting that. Is there something you expect as a crisis management I think tool? It will be quite ridiculous if his team probably they are in meetings trying to find out how they will debunk this and it's taking them longer because the first time i came in contact mm -hmm. with this video was last week friday personally i think it was forwarded and on a whatsapp platform so that's the first time i saw that video and tomorrow it will be a, almost a week tomorrow will be a week since i saw that video wow and so and you have been holding on to this video you mean you well, no, of course uh, i've not been holding on to the video personally i am i am from cardinal state i am from southern Carolina. so when the video uh you are indeed not shocked. No, I was not shocked at all. So what I am trying to say is that it is difficult for Erufai and his team to try and debunk this story, this this video that I showed. What 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 laudable excuse do you have for a video that has multiple people in the room? You want to come out and say AI 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 <laughs> all the people in the room with the media houses that were there with the react it is it is going to be a very a difficult tax for them all, it's an impossible tax for them any anything they try to do or say to other than apologize and go through whatever if, if there are groups suing him for anything go through whatever that process is anything than less than an apology is going to ridicule them not Nigerians, because it is clear. This was not, you know, it's easy to come out and say that. It's come out and say that a statement, okay, it was just a line, a sentence. This was not a sentence. This were multiple sentences that are slightly meaning mathematics in his words. Mathematics that I did that people do not necessarily vote for our party as a unifier. As someone that is for peace building and all you notice that all oh, these people do not like to vote for my party what you find the root cause what you find why is the reason that um, can, uh, certain people from the other part of Kaduna, southern Kaduna, do not like to vote for apc i'm trying to see, try to see the way you can bring them together and in terms of pushing out your campaign mm -hmm. that is what every political party that is intentional about peace building in a city like Kaduna state in the states like Kaduna state should be looking forward to do not to cause division and to start inciting and uh, making insightful statements and say okay because they did not do that we decided that we will focus on the people that will vote for us what about are you going to chase the people out of the state they are still indigenous of the state and deserve every full right that uh, that is given to any other part of the state so that this video has further revealed to nigerians who El nasiru erufa is because if he was someone that is you know a peace builder he would that thought would never have crossed his mind he would be looking for how to unify a people not to further divide a people which is what he has done and he's there boasting about boasting about how he has successfully achieved that and even now the present uh, administration is also because it's a Muslim, 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 Muslim ticket, ticket right. and now it, it will take the last next 20 years because i understand how sir so i did not need interpretation when i was watching that video i knew what he was talking about it will take for the next 20 years they'll still be there I mean, I'm waiting for that debunk. I'm waiting to see what uh, Nasir Rafa and his team are saying. But there's another angle it. to this. We, um, we've okay. often heard people, politi politicians especially, address a certain crowd. And because they want to be relatable to that crowd, they want to say things that those that the crowd would cheer them for, they say things they do not particularly mean. You have endured eight years of the, uh, of the Erufai, Malam Erufai's administration with what he said. Is it indeed the reflection of how the southern Kaduna um, felt, the, the, the Christian part of Kaduna state really felt in his administration? I read the transcript of, the, of, of his statement and I, he said, he was fair to everyone. Is that something you agree with? He said there were schools that were built in all districts, irrespective of, of um, your religious leanings. There were hospitals that were built in all districts, irrespective of, of religious leanings. 
Is that true? Okay, before I answer that, I'll start with the first statement that led to the question you just asked and to say that all politicians, when they go to certain groups, they try to, you know, um, um, get chairs. Get chairs. So, I, 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 you, I, you alluding to the fact, or is Nasir Rufai alluding to the fact, because I, I, I don't know if that's part of his debunk, that perhaps that is what that community intends to do. That is what will make that community happy. That, that co I, 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 are we alluding to the fact that that community is the one that do not want to see equal representation, especially in the state that is uh, crisis torn, that has history of crisis, religious killings, ethnic ethnical killings. Are we saying that there are a group that, except if that exists, then we can now say that, that, that that's a reason for a, a, a five statement. So if that exists, then we now say that the issues are even further deeper. They, they, they are not, they do not come up from anywhere. So I just want to speak, I just want to throw that out there. Now speaking to and the question as to there was um roads hospitals built and all that well i i have not done an investigation as to uh, how if it was lopsided if it was lopsided right i have not done, done an investigation but were projects um, carried out in the southern kaduna part absolutely but in um part of what he said when he was saying that that okay we did projects and all of that he said eh so that when they come and they say oh we are being marginalized we are being we are not being taken into account we can prove to them that uh, a muslim led government is the one that has done this and that to sort of shut them up now this sort of shut them off for like sort of aspiring for a higher Posture of being involved in the government, and in that same video, he made mention to the fact that um, about three or four important offices were were headed by Muslims, Muslims. and then they then decided to give. Okay, what is it that we, we can afford not to? So I mean, I, I, at this point, it's very difficult to defend. I I I do not envy whoever is trying to come up with that statement to def to defend Erufai because he has given everything that we need to hear about his person, his character, and what he thinks and what the plan is. He has said it himself. So it's I, I, like I said, I do not envy that person, and I don't know if I answered your question sufficiently. You, uh, you, you have, you have really, but um some of us used to hold traditional and religious leaders in really high esteem. You know, when you hear about the eroding of our morals these days, we look up to religious and, and traditional. While I did not see the end of that video, to the, I would have loved to see traditional leaders move up to say, what you just said was wrong. At no time should you say that the leadership of the state should go to only a certain religion because there's an agenda per se say do you think that it is something we're losing in the country in kaduna state <clears throat> well i know that while everybody was talking there were applauses that were going i, I heard the applauses as well really okay, great at least you could hear applause mm -hmm. they, 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 they did not applause in house i was <laughs> hoping to <laughs> hear people so saying you are wrong you should not say that well uh, we didn't see that from that video what we saw were applauses and and, and i mean earlier when you were uh, trying to make a case as to okay perhaps this is i uh, wasn't making okay, a case okay, okay i was just being a journalist you're being a journalist you're doing your job you're asking perhaps if they were trying to you know get chairs and all and it seems like uh he said what they wanted to hear right and they were applauding so i i didn't see i don't know if someone after that meeting pulled him aside but from what we are seeing from this video what we could see basically is support and people and uh, that felt that they had a governor that was uh, reflecting their wishes and you know strategically and mathematically in his words because he said mathematically, he mathematically, did, mathematically, he did, mathematically did so so uh, i don't know it's so sad to see that you know our traditional leaders religious leaders as well uh, have and are uh, sort of rather than being a solution to the problem and trying to um um dissolve like tension and all they are not necessarily playing that role and i'm hoping that you know i always hope against hope regardless of how things are I even when sometimes i do not see the hope in you <laughs> <laughs> there were 
sometimes you seem like you are just seeing a bleak future. No. But it's good to hear you say you. There are times when you do hope. No, <laughs> no I, I do see what I, I do see the I do see the bleak picture, right? But I still see Nigerians. I still see. Nigerians, I, I was in the market earlier today. I transacted with a lot of wonderful Muslims. I know that this is not a sentiment every Muslim out there holds. I, I, so I, in the little things, no matter how bleak it may be, in the little things, those are the things that give me hope. If not, I'll just be a depressed individual seeing that I'm from Southern Cardinal States. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, my, my, my intention is not to get you <laughs> depressed, but let's talk about his successor, uh, Senator Uber Sani, who has taken uh, the, 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 uh, the governorship uh, position. And as you already know, I'm not sure if it was his personal intention, the way governor, former governor Erufai sounded. It seemed like it's an agenda he's following. He was sitting right next to he him. He was sitting right next to him. And I saw him giggle at some point. Yeah, there were times when uh, he giggled. Do you think he shares this and it's it indeed an agenda that it's going to be followed? After 20 years of ensuring this, according to that video, no, after 20 years... Of ensuring this the christians will no longer even have to uh, um, stand up to 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 contest against it because they would just succumb to the fact to, to, to yes yeah, be well that's your words i don't want to use those words but yeah but you think that his successor shares this especially uh, you were here you we are on you on this pro, uh, platform a couple of uh, uh, days weeks that was yeah, last week, week really oh, that was exactly yeah. last week ago where we talked about uber sunny's uniting inaugural speech do you think he does ad ad agree to this because in that inaugural speech he was quick to say he was a governor for all and he was not going to um you know sideline anyone excuse me okay so like from his speech we all know that and <clears throat> this is not particularly uh, directed to Ubersani as a person but we know that generally in the larger scope of things our politicians are quick to say beautiful words read, read beautiful speeches make very lofty promises right and so as to the as to what i'm hoping to see like i said in the last interview we just keep our fingers crossed and watch what he does now but i would i would have been even more generous uh when i say generous i would be more hopeful if the ticket that Ubasani is riding on is a christian or muslim ticket or muslim christian ticket as it were but if uh, governor Ubasani uh during the primary is looking for his deputy did not see the need to first of all get a christian to run with him that is already you know giving me a, a lot of room for speculations which i do not want to make right now mm. i would rather he acts and like he like the political analyst that i am i analyze it so i am hoping i am hoping that upasani is smart enough i don't know him i am just hoping that he is smart enough to read the room okay to read the tension across the country to read the tension and the room in within cardinal states to learn from the mystics of his um predecessor does he understand there were mystics i said it's i'm hoping i have not had a personal interaction with him i've not seen enough interviews with him like i have with erufai for the last eight years mm -hmm. that gives me reasons to boldly clearly state the kind of person that Nasiru Erufa is. He was a senator, yes. He was not a senator for, uh, for my uh, region. So I wouldn't say I necessarily play, paid close attention to his antecedents and precedents. So I do not want to preempt him. I want, uh, you know, most of the times where people accuse Nigerians, and I've had that conversations, and when I say Nigerians, I mean generally, to say, okay, um, the new president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is just how many days in? People should wait, wait first. So give him, wait, give him the benefit <laughs> of doubt. Give him the benefit of that. So I'll, I'll give him both the benefit of doubt and see and begin to look at his appointment. So he just recently appoint, made appointments and across 27 
is it 27 i can't remember what the appointment was was it ministers or i can't remember what the appointment so i don't want to say anything wrongly and if we are going by the senatorial and um, district uh it was fair it reflected it reflected that okay because it was 27 and if you divide it by three it would be nine persons and it was nine nine each mm. so yeah so i don't i i want to give like i said in the last video uh, interview i want to give uh Upasani, and i hope that we give Upasani a clean slate mm. to make his mark if it's a bad mark we are here discussing everything and the videos that he is doing in the secret or in the open <laughs> we thank the lord for social media and we thank god for the internet because if this happens some I can just imagine. Years, I can just imagine, ago, Deborah. That anything that some Kaduna people are saying or Kaduna people are saying, we will say that is is controversy, is conspiracy theory. But I can just yeah, imagine true. that because it is so controversial, the mainstream media organizations, though be, be, before the social media blew it out, out like this, the mainstream media organizations would have been very careful to even because this is that. something that would have seen yes, after we saw, like I said earlier, we saw reputable media organizations, we saw their lap, their mics uh, uh, re, re, represented there, so they indeed covered it. They probably do have those footages, but they were unsure to put such um a video out there or that kind of news out there and or I maybe it was it was managed better but well, for media for the social media i think that that's, that's a responsibility i think the media has a tough job mm -hmm. right the media has a tough job but i think that the, need, the media needs to be more bold and assertive in their role and i understand that the past administration and the media and even generally speaking, the media usually face um, this problem of press freedom. Yes, NBC one has to be so careful. And all of that. But like I said, uh, thank God for social media. Thank God for the internet. Because mm. this may just have just been a narrative that the exactly. would, people would be accused of peddling and trying to divide nation because there was no proof. But now there is proof. So, but going forward, I don't think that this is something the media should sweep up under the carpet. It, like, I, if it's something that you're going to get sanctioned, push it out as early as possible through the social media. Mm. So and they're not in credit. Oh, there's a, there's a, there's a, that's another kettle of fish, Deborah. Oh. Because when you say the when media, the media pushes the media, it, the media, the media you mean, job. You mean, I am, an, I am a trained journalist. journalist. I'm not a practicing journalist. Mm. I'm a trained journalist. I'm not a practicing journalist. And I can tell you for a fact that the media job is not for the faint-hearted. It is not. And that that's one. The me, especially when it comes to investigative reporting and mm -hmm. making big stories, right? There are sometimes you do it for the love of the job. In Not spite the of the training, Deborah, we the have money. watched we have watched people unfairly being fined. That's what I'm saying about press freedom. And all we do is shrug no, and, no, no, and no, no, oh no, no. no. joy as your life has just been shrug. I don't what think has shrug. a I remember, I remember that I'm, I'm going to speak to that. I remember was it last year or two years ago? I can't remember correctly. I think uh, was it Coyote of Channels TV and I think another person I can't remember that were taken in by the DSS and the CSOs rally rally around them and ensured that they did not spend one day there and i know that there are people that do not have that access that kind of uh, way that they can you know escalate things to get the attention right. of the CSO. we've seen journalists die i think was it a punch of vanguard and uh, journalists mm -hmm. that died at some point and all so but like i said earlier the media role is not for the faint-hearted right it's not really people with guts and audacity to be able to break some of the stories and uh, regardless of the consequences because it's always good you count the cost if you know that this is not your theory exactly, exactly. But, exactly. But we are I seeing, pick your we are seeing more and more daily every day independent journalists coming up that are bo emboldened and bold to do and as say they as i they like should. to think i'm one and of them but let's talk about the backlash uh, people who who brought this to fore also have faced i mean i was listening or rather reading through social media and here and listening i i, I like I'm, I'm i'm like you said i don't have the heart to go on twitter for instance to tweet i, I like to read comments <laughs> because it's it can be very vile that's that's even saying the least Absolutely. however while reading about 
about this story and how it trended on social media, there were those who claimed or who were pushing a narrative that Erufai at the moment is in very good, um, is, has a very good relationship with the present um, president. President Bola Tinubu, he's probably being earmarked for a, a juicy political appointment. And this was, in lack of words to use, intentional to deviate that plan. Is that is that something, um, as a journalist now, and as a political analyst, I want you to be unemotional about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I don't know if I can tell you that. I don't know if I can tell you that. I don't think I'm emotional. emotional. I think well, I'm quite objective. Uh, well, let's, let's like, try to get you objective. Is this coming out because he is being earmarked for a juicy appointment? He he, 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 has, he's a, he enjoys a good relationship with the top, with President Bola Tinubu and his team. And, and and this is why it's coming out now well uh, of course you know talking about politics you see this kind of game plays and always play out right so it's very possible i do not i don't have information as to how credible that is but it's very possible that that is that is the that is the case and but for me at the same time it is at the same time it is sad that that is the case because it is not until there is a vested interest that these stories come out mm -hmm. whether there is vested interest or not this is a story that should have like we've earlier agreed should have broken the day or the a day after that clip was gotten right mm. but because there is now possibly allegedly as you said a vested interest as to why and really though really though do nigerians want someone like nasiru erufai to head to, to, a, a, to a head ministry, a ministry or, or, or a parastata or a parastata or be part of the cabinet or be part of that entirely exactly who are you asking this question Deborah Nigerians, do you people right. want someone like Nasiru Erufai to be in a leadership position going by the videos you have seen and everything that has happened in the last eight years and all the allegations that have been tuned to his name I leave that to Nigerians. I like and that. And then the Bola met Tinubu himself, you know, all about because during his campaign and the president Bola met Tinubu himself during the campaign, he kept assuring he would treat all of us equal. It is not any ad Muslim Muslim agenda, and uh, nobody's trying to cause chaos in the country. It is just politics. Okay. Match your words with action okay having said that deborah i think it's a good time to go for a break right now we have still so much to discuss this is still joy asoye live we'll be back shortly stay with us Welcome back. This is still Joy Asoye Live, where we've been discussing Erufai's statement and national peace and unity. President Bola Tinubu had, before the election, suffered tremendous backlash when he revealed his running mate, Senator Shetima. That was when Nigerians brought about the Muslim Muslim ticket. Standing against it, there were discordant tunes against all of that. In all of this, Governor Erufai, have, having had his video, the recent video that was um, that went viral, especially on social media, latching onto the national, and it has become great concern to people. Is this indeed an agenda from the national, where President Bolatinubu is also f focusing on this or, or, or following this agenda? of Muslim, Muslim, and that is what we would see over years. That's some of the things we'll be discussing from this for the second half of this interview. Deborah Yusuf, political analyst, is still with us here. And my question would be, having heard, um, having heard uh, 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 former governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasir Erufai, a lot of people are asking, is this indeed a national agenda because in that statement 
in his video, he, he talked about Peter B, who is a Christian who thought he could win, but because of his religious leanings, he could not win, and that they are replicating what was going on in Kaduna nationally. I, I will get to whether this hot President Buha, uh, President Bola Tinubu's, Tinubu's, um, <coughs> well, if, if, if it hurts his, his, the ambience ar around people, the ambience within people towards him. But let's talk about if indeed Tinubu thought this far before picking a running mate. Hmm. Well, I'm not a Lagosia. I do not have a lot of experience in terms of you know, watching uh, Bola Metinubu and following him closely. We all saw the um, the controversies around his presidential um, bid. We all saw the agitation from some people against his presidential bid. And we saw the ambition. Emilokan, it's Emilokan. my turn. Mm. Right? We saw the ambition about that, about that beat of a person that, uh, you know, really wanted to be president. So I'd say that I can't say for certain if, if um, Bola Metinubu thought that far. But I think that Bola Metinubu wanted to do everything possible that would make him president. I would say that that's what I gathered from whatever whatever that was going on. And I don't know because I'm from Kaduna State, right? Mm. Is Kaduna from the north? Yes. Northwest region. I am Christian. We have a lot of Christians in politics across the north in, s in several northern regions. There are Christians there. It's most in most northern states. It's not a question of 80, 20 percent. Is it that 60, 40, 50, 50? In very few northern states will you find that 80. And I think that that's what a lot of people are not aware because well, when they just right. see uh, northerners, they just say, oh, how some man. Mm -hmm. You fail to understand that in Kaduna State alone, particularly southern Kaduna, there are about 66, 50, 50 to 60 basically ethnic ethnic groups i think that lack of information contributed probably contributed to what we saw in the elections and how things played out uh, what i am saying and what i am getting to is the fact that bola ahmed tinubu had a chance to choose someone from the christian community someone that is a christian politician to be his running mate. People say he's the master strategist. So I don't know what strategy he saw that made him think that picking a Christian from the north was not going to make him win. So I would allude to the fact that I am not certain why if Bola met Todafa, but he could have made a different decision and possibly still be the president now mm. you, you think he would have won possibly i think that he, he it is possible that he could have won with a christian from the north mate. with a christian from the north running mate it is very possible mm. it is but very but, possible um, Erufa had we, alluded in that video that christians are not voting for the apc do you think it, it, that, that there is such a plan well, especially because something. of the yes daddy video that that also <laughs> went viral yeah, yeah, yeah. yes is, is is there an agenda from uh, divides whatever okay. divide you look at it is there an agenda because those are the conversations that are going right on social media i'll tell you something let's right. talk about the past administration for a bit i remember on um, 2015 that was the first uh, in time yeah 2015 yeah 2015 when muhammadu buhari came into the scenery as always because he has been campaigning year in right. year out there was this sort of rebranding that was done and branding you know i am a communications person i know the importance of branding of course right and that is why i am sticking to the fact that it is it was possible 
that Bola Ahmed with a Christian candidate from could the have North won. would have won mm. if the writings were done. I'm not within I'm not an APC person. But that is just talking about the dynamics and how things can be done properly to reflect a national unity and cohesion. Now, is there an agenda? That's the question on everyone's mind. Going by what Erufai has said, there is an agenda. Is but Bala Ahmed Tinubu part of that agenda? I'm waiting for Bala Ahmed Tinubu to answer that question. I won't answer that question for him. If you were Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who maybe was considering Balam Erufai for uh, a position, what would be your stand? Because we still refer to uh, Erufai for what he ha he did for for the FCT when he was minister of the FCT. We saw sanity. We went back to the 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 original plan of the FCT. That's something a lot of people still applaud him for. So yes, he did appreciable things to applaud him however do you think it would or if if hypothetically speaking if he was being considered for for this would you think it would affect his chances i think get the question if um if, if you were if, if you were the president of nigeria mm -hmm. the, the federal republic of nigeria at the moment and you have been here marking the likes of ero5 for a position but be, because believe Absolutely. it or not believe it or not ero5 had worked hard for for the emergence of president bolatinubu and that is why it's very suspect if this is a national agenda but that's aside now <laughs> if you were the president would you still consider with all this that's going on the feeling this this narrative these nuances that there is a national agenda of islamizing nigeria i remember I, when you were talking about the past administration i was waiting for you to talk about how it went rife everybody was talking about um, um uh, uh, the former president buhari muhammad buhari coming on board and islamizing nigeria that was that that went rife would you still go ahead with, with getting the likes of Erufai in your cabinet? If I were president, we would not even be having this conversation to begin with. This would not be a conversation to start. But let, let me play into the um, if you were analogy. President, no, no, no. Let's not play yet. If you were president, what would you do? You would come out and disassociate immediately. Yes, absolutely. This is... This is how long now? How many days now? Six days since... Okay, since days since I saw the video. I don't know since when the world saw the video. I saw it about but, two days ago. Okay. Six days. Absolutely. This is very important that the president should be seen that he is not in part of any uh, agenda that seeks to sideline uh, one the ha other half of the country. So absolutely, the president should disassociate himself with this kind of uh, persons as Nasiru Erufai. And anything really that is being done otherwise now would just increase the tension in the state. And Bola Metinubu cannot afford that. I read in the papers this morning and he was saying that democracy is not easy. And I'm like, okay, Erufai is just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw, I saw that too, where he said, where he said um, um, democracy in nigeria is, is is not easy and in my head i was like and erufai just made it harder for you it's important that the president comes out and disassociates himself it is in his best interest and the best interest of his administration and the best interest of the of the of the country for the next four years it is in the best interest of everyone that wants nigeria to stay together in peace and harmony and love to come and disassociate himself from nasiru erufai Wow. Do you think that this would give Nigerians that skepticism towards the president at the moment? You know, Nigerians, I, I usually say this, that Nigerians are not ahead. Everybody has independent thinking, right? So, but generally speaking, in, in all honesty, right, and looking at what we have on ground and what we're grappling with as a country, I think that yes, that uh, it's very likely the Nigerians would lose some sort of confidence in the administration if the president does not disassociate himself with the video and with Nasir Erufai. It will. Because I, I know that, uh, you know, going around doing my normal day-to-day -day business and I hear people having a lot of hope than I, I expected to say that, oh, let's just wait. 
the the farm price it will come it down. Will come down. Let's I, just I, wait. I, it Things me. will be better. Eh, you don't know this kind of people are making excuses, trying to have hope that and okay, giving perhaps this government and giving this government benefit, a chance, exactly. a benefit of doubt to prove exactly. themselves. You already know my position about first subsidies, so I'll not even go that route. By the way, but for whoever <laughs> is listening right now and wondering her position, she is completely against fuel subsidy. But go ahead. The removal of fuel the subsidy. removal yeah. of fuel, fuel subsidy. Yeah. So. Uh, what was I? I lost the <laughs> no, 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 you were, you were just talking about how the president should disassociate immediately from Erufai and, and, and that video. Absolutely. I think it's in the best interest of the president and his cabinet, his administration. It's in the best interest of Nigeria. It's in the best interest of Africa. It's the best of the entire world. It's in the best interest of everyone at this point. Really, really. And I think that it, 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 will be, it will be sad and very depressing to see the president either keep quiet or say anything in support of Nasi Rerufai. For some of us who are just watching, you know, we, we, we've not had the president. This has not, this is, this is the first time we've had this president being faced with anything like this. I mean, it's, it's, it's expected. He's only been there for a couple of days. It's, it's, not up to, it's not up to two weeks now, is it? Mm -hmm. Now, for, for some of us who are waiting, how long is too long? <laughs> because the past president would, we I can almost bet my bottom dollar he would not respond to it. <laughs> 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 you're making me really laugh and you're making me feel like I'm taking a stand. I'm, I'm a generous sorry. Here. <laughs> so, um, how long is too long for a proper response of, of this magnitude? Because we're seeing another divide is giving me that that feel of campaign that tension that was on during the campaign seasons there were several speculations here and there we're going back there now we have a precedent how long is too long for a response you said you saw that video two days ago i did it's going to be one week tomorrow it since was. i saw that video mm -hmm. um I'm, I'm thinking right about now regardless of whatever is going in the villa the president should have already heard about this how, how are you sure he doesn't I'm have thinking, I'm I mean, he, do, he doesn't have his cabinet ready complete so probably there's nobody to update him on this okay that's a possibility regardless right i think that uh if um bola metinubu has learned anything from the past administration it's always you know trying to check the pulse of the nation for yourself and not from what your cabinet are saying. So I, I want to, I want to, I expect that um, the president should be more proactive in checking the pulse of the nation beyond what his cabinet and the people around him tell him. So if it is within the knowledge of the president, then I'd expect that at most, at the very most, and I feel like I'm being generous here, by this time next week should be too late we'll, we'll be late okay a week yeah. away from now will be too late so within a week that, that reminds me of another situation i'll not really bring up here but if you have to advise um the christians right now mm. who have to listen to their governor and and agree with policies he enacts if you have to advise them as to how to move forward uh, would you say disregard or take it seriously and maybe back a christian candidate next time what would be your advice my advice would definitely not to disregard this is not something to be disregarded absolutely not it's not something to be disregarded next steps to be taken is left for uh uh it's left for Christian leaders, religious leaders, to have a round table and discuss this issue. What would you want to see in that discussion? I don't know. I don't know. My people I'm not a religious say. leader, but I would like to see some sort of... Now, we know that this thing is, is, more, is more than what meets the eye. So, what are we going to do? going to do it is what uh, it is no 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 it isn't what is what it is <laughs> whatever that means <laughs> whatever that means 
what it is right now is that you know you just asked me just before this question right uh how long is too long for the president to respond i think this is the time for religious leaders christian leaders alike to pressure the president to respond and that will send set the pulse of the nation okay pressure the president to respond how does that help the Christian candidate who probably wants to... Pressure the, pressuring the president, president to respond will tell us what the president's stance is. If he's disassociating himself from mm. Erufai, okay. if he, what steps he's taking to actually reassure... <laughs> you know, we heard the word reassure the vast past. Mm. Yeah, get I assure reassure you. Nigerians mm. that something is if, if if there's something that needs to be done i don't know i don't i don't have all the answers really but i know that this is not something to be disregarded okay and for the christian candidates mm -hmm. I, what what often happens I, I just want to quickly go through what often happens to these christian candidates is it that they do not have the support of the christians and then you still go what happens i don't want to okay, hear yeah, that yeah. narrative yeah i get i get i get where you're coming from mm, because <coughs> um it's it's one thing for yeah, one person from. it's it's it's, it's a thing for one person to come I and say from. i am following an agenda i want Christ, a, a certain religious uh, um, uh, people to I get support the question. yes i get the question so what often happens really joy i i have a master's in international affairs and strategic studies mm -hmm. so i i i have a background as to historical context of nigeria and how nigeria came to be and all that happened right and as much as i don't want to go that lane that line that direction your question makes me think of that mm -hmm. as far back as the colonial era where the colonial masters hmm, i don't like to call them masters though but yeah that it is what it, it is, is, what it is. <laughs> colonial masters came in and sort of oh nigeria black people what can we do with this nation and they sort of unequally and arbitrarily and uh, divided the nation and the continents are large it's not just a nigeria thing and so when you ask why this is happening and even when we now look at uh, other african countries you can see what's happening in sudan there's something else going down in senegal, in senegal there, it's so sad so there is a straight line that can be drawn and i don't think a one hour program is enough to hack that uh line mm. but I encourage you know one of the things you know uh in the past i don't know if it's been brought back but in the past history was removed from our curriculum and that sort of you know fueled the agenda uh during the past administration history is important they say people who don't know their history will not know where to go in future so i think that it has to when when we're looking at it i don't know if i've provided enough answers but when we're looking at it, it is something that we have to go back as and trace it to where we got it wrong and, and i'm not even saying because we should begin to you know play the game of colonial blaming come on we're past that we're not the only people that were colonized i understand that we have our dynamics our differences and no, all that peculiarities, but it's exactly, not enough. peculiarities exactly but it's not enough reason to keep crying every day that's uk europe no come on we are how many years old 63 mm. Yes, I, I apologize, Nigeria. Yeah. I failed you. <laughs> we are six, I can't so believe you just put me in the spot <laughs> like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, and come on, how old is a 60 plus uh, woman? Like in putting it in that context, so we have come of age to decide what we want mm -hmm. as a country, right? Whether I want to unite this country or whether I want to say, Oh, yeah, everybody go your way or we actually want we love that we're diverse well, i, I, I love to understand why people. you went through the colonial era oh, to answer the I, question I mean, I, okay the simple question of oh, really? what has been going on okay. with the christian tickets is it that we do you uh, the southern kaduna mm -hmm. the christian kaduna people do not support that ticket 
I, I won't say that that's the case. I won't say that it was not supported by the Christian people or the um so okay, why I went to the colonial routes, I'm going to I don't know how to comp compress this within a within <laughs> a, a minute. <laughs> yes, I don't know how to compress this, but I'm going to try. So uh, if you look at uh, how Nigeria is divided, right? Mm -hmm. You see that there are more northern states, right? That nineteen. There are nineteen northern states, right? And that has to do do with how uh, the col the colonial masters drafted out everything now when they came to nigeria they saw um how oh god joy you make it really difficult for me to compress this thing there were there, <laughs> there were there were the the, the system that they saw mm -hmm. it was easier it was easier that through the through the indirect uh, rule indirect rule and then amalgamation no, no, that's not where I'm going to. Because you're so, taking us really far uh, back. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking really far back, and you're giving me so little time to take you really far back. But I think that at the end of the day, I, 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 I'll, I'll say that let Nigerians go and do their homework and read their, the history. That there is a root cause that comes across. When, when the colonial masters came, they saw that okay, the easy way to hack this thing that they could oppress Nigerians and was to go through uh, some um, traditional religious leaders that were larger from that road, right? and that region. Yes, that's the indirect route that was from that. Uh, region of the country and that um, um, religion, if I may, and then they, they, they leveraged on that and gave them most of the powers and that is why you've consistently seen that, okay, we have more northern uh, leaders in than other leaders. Do you understand? I think so, I get where you're going. Thank you. But unfortunately, we've run out of time. I would have really loved to follow you on this long train of going back memory lane as to the history of Nigeria. It would have been a, love, a lovely ride back there, but we do not have as much time. We've been discussing with Deborah Yusuf. She's a political analyst. And we were discussing Erufai's remarks and the national peace and unity. This has been Joy Asoye Live. Well, this is where we draw the curtains but i must say thank you deborah yusu for being part of the program thank you for having and me and it's so it's so exciting <laughs> the passion you speak with especially when we go the kaduna the kaduna it's my state i'm from southern kaduna i can't help it i can understand but this is where we wrap it up we'll be back tomorrow with so much more have a wonderful evening <laughs>